and welcome to In the Word TV. I am your co-host, Shayla Crow, and this is our founder, Larry Cook. And we're so excited about having you with us today. We uh, are learning more and more about uh, TV and, yes. and, and how, to, <laughs> how to put a program together. So we just pray that you'll keep watching and forgive us for any craziness that happens here. Have fun with us. We're, we're just enjoying uh, Jesus and life and uh, we want these shows to just be real. We're just uh, just real people, and yes. we're we're not going to try to overwhelm you with our great wisdom and knowledge. We're <laughs> just going to overwhelm you with the the Word of God and the power of God, and and uh, what the Lord has to say to us. And uh, Shayla and I were talking uh, about what we were going to share today, and we really want to share about the Word. Yes. What 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 the Word means to us. So. Sh you want to start out? And yeah, well, I think, you know, um, naturally, as humans, we are, I think that there is a desperate desire for truth. It, yeah. You know, inside of us, we are all desperate for truth. And in this generation, I think there's a hunger for authenticity. And I feel like sometimes in our humanness, we look everywhere but where we should be looking for the truth. And, right. and um, you yeah. know, I think you either believe the Word of God as, as the infallible truth or you don't, you yeah. know, and um, and so we're going to look today at the scriptures and kind of what we believe and why we believe that the Bible is the ultimate truth. And the Bible says that, you know, Jesus came literally as flesh and, and he was the word and the word was with us and he dwelt among us. And and so we just want to encourage you yeah. to dig into this. And um, I want to start with the scripture in Psalms. In Psalms 119, it talks about um, it's 119, 105, and I'll just say it. You can look it up later if you want, but it says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light mm -hmm. to my path. And um, further down in the scripture, in 130, it says, The entrance of your word gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. And I think just one of the, the basic... Um, you know, the basic statements of the Bible is it is simple enough to for us to understand. I think both Larry and I talk about how we had struggles in school and had hard times reading, and yeah. both of us really learned yeah. the power of English and reading by reading the Word. And I've heard many great men and women of God who struggled all their life um, with what the world would, would say is knowledge to yeah. really understand yeah. and learn, um, and learning truth by reading the Word. And so... Um, God's word said that it doesn't return void, that it does what it's meant to do. And, you know, it, the more that you learn and believe that this is truth, the more that you have hope in victory. Yeah. And so. Yeah. Well, it's, now, don't misunderstand. She, she said it really helped us with English. It did not help well, me with English. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> my, my English is still really weird. <laughs> but, but it helped us learn how to apply the, the language and yes. the word of God. But, uh, gosh, I, I still can't speak English. But anyhow, so I'm really excited today uh, about this because uh, today we, I find there's so few people really spend time in the Word, and that's what we want to do is encourage you. This book is incredible. There is so much in here and uh, of prophecy about uh, things that were going to, going to happen that came to pass prophecies of things that are happening right now, yeah, prophecies about things that are going to happen in the future, that, that God didn't miss anything, that the Word of God is, is complete, and He already knew what was going to happen. The Bible says He knew from the very beginning of time yeah. uh, my future and, and, and the plans that He has for me. Not that I've fulfilled all the plans that God has for me, but now that at, as we've read and we've studied, we, we've grown to understand, I need to find out what the plan is. I need to find out what God's doing in my life. Yeah. And so when, when Shayla says, you know, the, the, as she reads the word, we, we've grown. And really, this is where we got our uh, uh, education from is the word of God. Now, you went to Bible college and I taught at Bible college, which is really <laughs> funny. But uh, that, that God would use me to do that. But it's because we had a hunger for the Word. Matter of fact, one reason I love teaching is it drives me to the Word of yeah. God. You know, the more, the more we share, the more we have to study. Yeah. And when people challenge us, I don't know about you, but when people say, well, why do you believe this? I think, well, I've got to go back to the Bible. Yeah. 
and and reread to make sure I understand how to answer questions that people have. Well, I was just, um, as you were saying that, remembering when we were in Bible school, one of the reasons, you know, in our classes and our studying, I remember one of our um, instructors saying, you know, one of the reasons why Christians struggle so much is because we don't even know what we don't know, um, you know, <laughs> really. And we have other religions and other denominations or whatever that, you know, they are they are disciplined in their learning yeah. there you know for some of them it's not even an option to not right. be disciplined you know right. uh, yet we struggle just to five, find five minutes to get in the word and, and then then in return because we aren't solidified here then when life comes we question the heart and character of god because we exactly. don't we're not really getting to know him and his heart for us yeah. and so you know th that's a huge that's a huge area is unbelief you know do we really even believe this yeah. and well, that's one reason I, I, I did a study for once years ago, and I wrote a little booklet. And the reason I did it was some, somebody came to me and says, I have so much trouble sharing the word of God and getting people to understand or to believe. And I thought, well, there's, there's certain things in here that have challenged me uh, with truth to understand why, why is this book so important? What, yeah. what makes it so powerful? What is it about it that uh, is so incredible? And, and, I, and I read little scriptures such as in Job chapter 26, verse 7. It, it says, it's a crazy statement. You've got to think Job's, with the, from what I understand, I don't know exactly I wasn't <laughs> there, but it's one of the oldest books in the Bible. So we're talking about something that's going back thousands and thousands of years, three, 4,000 years yeah. at least. And, and this is what, what Job had to say back then. said that God stretched out his hand... And over empty space, he hung the earth in the midst of nothing. What's really weird about that is thousands of years ago, most cultures believed that something held the world up. That the world was, was not just spinning in space out here in the middle of nothing. But, but some cultures even showed like columns that held the earth up. And some had elephants holding the earth up. And uh, just a lot of different things in different <laughs> cultures back thousands of years ago. And superstitions about how it was. And even people thought the world was flat. But Job here, all those 4,000 years ago, had heard from God. And God had shown him that this earth is just hanging in the midst of space. And of course, as soon as we started flying airplanes and going right. around, we, we really proved that this thing is just hanging here in the midst of nothing. And, and to me, that's just incredible that these men 4,000 years ago that didn't travel over a few miles from home anywhere uh, had that uh, enlightenment from God, the Word of God, God speaking, and because this is a spoken word. Yeah. This is this is God speaking. This is just this is not a book. <laughs> this is God's voice. This is God's word. And and you need to understand it's so much more than a book or just this is my Bible, you know, <laughs> kind of a thing. Yeah, the word I mean right here in Hebrews it says the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to divide the soul and the spirit, the joints and the marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. And so, yeah. you know, all through here we see that the word of God is alive. It's yeah. for today. It's for now. You know, yeah. it stood the test of time, but it's so relevant, you know, from behind us and for where we're going. Like you said, I think um, another thing, again, with the generation that we're living in, you know, we have these extremities of obsessed with, uh, you know, prophecy or the future or doom and gloom, or we literally have no idea what the word says prophetically, yeah. that God loves us so much that even in his word, he tells us of things to come, you know, so. I know awesome. when, when you talk about doom and gloom, you know, so many people when they read the Bible they, and and. Shame on some preachers have made <laughs> yeah. have made uh, this book to be fearful. Even the book of Revelation is is fearful to some people. They're afraid to even read it because it talks about these things that are coming. Right. And, these, and, and the truth is, Jesus said in the last days, and that's why you got to read the book to know what what's going on. He said in the last days, people are going to be eating and drinking and marrying and getting married and and just celebrating and living life. 
It, it, and, um, of course, when, it ha when the end happens, it's going to be bad, but it's only going to just be bad at the end. It's, it's, yeah. And because there's always trouble, there's been troubles from the beginning, and there's going to be troubles all through life. There's always earthquakes and tornadoes and, and storms and things in life, sicknesses and diseases, and 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 so that's that's not unusual. And you know we don't want you to to be in fear when the right. Bible says, "Fear not." <laughs> that perfect love casts that's out fear. fear. And so if we study the book, we'll find out we don't have to be afraid right. and, and live in fear anymore. Right. There's so many uh, scriptures that, that we could share with, especially prophetic. Uh, w one thing that I got years ago that's just, man, I couldn't believe what I was reading. It talks about in the book of Revelations that in the last days, there's going to be two prophets that are going to rise up in, in Jerusalem. And they're going to preach the word, and the enemy, the devil, is going to hate them. And in these last days, it's going to happen that the devil's going to have those two men killed. And it says their bodies are going to lay in the streets for three days, and the whole world will watch. And I thought, how will the whole <laughs> world watch? How could, how could the whole world, up until a few years ago, have watched three men lay in, or two men laying in the streets for three days? And until we started getting cable television uh, 20 years ago with the satellites and all, yeah. it was impossible. It couldn't happen. But that was written 2,000 years before it was even able to happen. And God had already written that so we would know what's going to happen in the future and how to, how to recognize it when it yeah. does happen. It just, it just amazes me that God is so prophetic about things. And even the mark... It says, you know, people used to talk about the 666, the <laughs> mark a lot. and But it says it's going to be in your hand or in your forehead. We thought it meant on your hand because up until a few years ago, you didn't have chips you could put in your hand or in your forehead. Uh, but it prophesied, and the book said, in the hand. didn't say on. And so how could it be in the hand? Well, of course, now they, they put the chips in dog's thing. ears mm -hmm. and stuff. And, and so you could read it, you could scan it, you could put it in your hand, go buy a scanner, and it will take money out of your account, give your medical record. We, we have the potential to put a mark in your hand or forehead. And then I asked God, I said, why would it be in your forehead? And he said, everybody doesn't have a hand, but everybody's got a forehead. Wow. So it, yeah. it, it answers itself if you think yeah. about it a little bit. Yeah, that's good. So. Well, I think, and the other thing is that even with that, like you said, even the knowledge of that perfect love casts out fear. And, you know, there, the, the Bible talks about this. That doesn't, you know, living a li the life serving Jesus and loving Jesus and being sold out to Jesus doesn't mean that we will live a life that comes without trial or comes without yeah. sacrifice or um, even death to, yeah. you know, cost us our life. But we never have to lose our peace and our hope. Right. And, and keeping eternity in mind is powerful. Another reason, um, you know, that I feel like, the, or, or, you know, I should say another reason why the Bible is so important to me is because for, for me and my family, this, is, this teaches us how to live. You know, as I, as I was yeah. growing as a Christian and I was so hungry for the Lord, but I would still make mistakes and I would still mess up. And we all do. We're on a journey. Um, my sisters and I were just joking this week. I text one of my sisters and I said, what age were you when you um, finally got out of debt? Because I remember a season in her life where her husband didn't, it was like they had made the decision, we're getting out of debt. And that was so hard for her. Like, yeah. no, I'm not getting my hair done or, you know, whatever. And I was just thinking about the different seasons of our life. And I text her and I said, you know, what age were you? And she was like, why are you asking this? And I said, I'm just wondering at what age most people are that they get their lives together. And she said, isn't it so funny when you master one area, you know, you realize that you still have other areas that pop up. And I love that because we never arrive, you know. Yeah. God says that with him that we can, we can be um, redeemed and we can be reconciled. But the more that we grow in him and the, the more our heart, heart turns to him, the more that we want to live in a way that honors and pleases him, um, which is really just surrendered. It's not yeah. perfection. But I'm yeah. saying that to say that in my life, you know, I'm so grateful because this has taught me how to live. And there have been times where I've really missed it in my life and I think one of the things I would encourage you is don't be afraid to miss it if you you know if you don't ever get out there 
because you're afraid to miss it, you'll, you'll never do anything and you'll still live rigid and you'll still live, you know, walled or whatever. Um, but this will teach me sometimes I'll go, oh, shoot, I, sh- you know, I shouldn't do that or I shouldn't operate that way. And, and now, because I have an understanding of the heart and character of the Lord, it sh- shows me that this is for my own good. And so, yeah. you know, I was just thinking yeah. about the scripture that says, you know, um, it, the word of God is for our instruction. It's t- yeah. teaching us how to live yeah. and teaching us how to, you know, uh, for our children and how to raise our children and, and how to, you know, help our children help their children and, you know. It's well, amazing. It's, it's, it's it for everything in boy. life. Yeah. It's, it's not just part or yeah. some. It, it's about everything. When you talk about raising kids and, and how to pray over them and how to bless them and how to help them grow in wisdom and knowledge. Yeah, and but or even live single. I mean, whatever, I, whatever yeah, that looks like. God has a plan. Yeah. I, I, was, I was reading in, in uh, Matthew 6, 33, one of my favorite scriptures. It says for us to... to really to be mindful to seek first the things of God, the kingdom of God, and his righteousness. Because he said when you, when you really do that, all the things that you've really been seeking, God wants to give you. Yeah. God already has the plan to bless us. God already desires to bless us. One of the, one of the saddest things I, I see in, in, the, in the church, because the world doesn't really ask for this, but, but I see people in the church praying for blessings. And I'm thinking, why are you praying for blessing? Right. If you read Deuteronomy 28, it says uh, that these blessings will overtake you. Yeah. I mean, blessings ought to be jumping on us, trying to <laughs> attack us, you know. Uh, uh, and, and it talks about all these blessings of being blessed in the city and in the country, in the field, wherever you're in the storehouse or your basket. And that means in everything that you have, God has a blessing. God has the ability yeah. to expand it, to grow it, to prosper everything that we have and do. And he wants to do that. So we shouldn't have to pray for something that God already says he wants to give us. The problem was he said, I will do this. I will bless you with this if. Yeah. Can you if that? what? If we keep his word, if we walk in his ways and his commandments. So if we really learn how to follow Jesus, that's why I need this book. Yeah. I need the instructions on what, where is that path right. that I need to be on? What, right. how, does, how does that path look? How does that journey look? What, what am I looking for to get through life? How do I navigate these problems? And right. How do I navigate through, through these circumstances that are coming? And, and so we need help. We need instruction. Uh, and, and if you don't... <laughs> If you don't realize you need some instruction on how to navigate life, well, you're, you're weird because I keep running into stuff and going, okay, this isn't the right way. There's a better way, and I have to go to God and find yeah. out, what's that better way? Right. How do, how do we navigate this problem that's arisen? How do we navigate these financial problems? Yeah. Uh, God has a plan for finances. How do we navigate gate these health problems or issues or, or just dealing with people at work, yeah. people that, that we're going to come in contact with every day that, that aren't agreeable to us or don't go along? How do, how do you deal with people that hate you? Right. Well, there's instructions <laughs> on how to, how to love people and how to bless people and how to encourage people and how to, how to help people get better. Yeah. And, and that's <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> one reason I... I get so excited about this because he says, if we will follow him, he will give us the instruction, seeking him first. He will bring all the things that we need in life. Boy, yeah. that, that's a ton. Yeah. That's, a, that's a lot of stuff. And I think, too, we don't realize the power that we take back from the enemy when we stay in. That's a place of rest. That's yeah. a place of peace, you know. Exactly. Um, we're from the great city of Houston, and as Larry was talking, I was just I'm trying not to bust out laughing right in this moment because I have my GPS and my ways everywhere I'm going, and it never fails. A lot of times I still get lost, <laughs> even today, <laughs> a few moments ago. And I come th- I've come down here a million times. But I think about that in our life. So many times I'm even driving in the city, and I'll have to reroute, reroute, you know, and, and I just think about that. Like, yeah. wh- where would I be without the road map? you know, the, uh, the, without the rope mat, without exactly. God, you know. And the scripture says right here in Second Timothy, it says all scripture is God-breathed and useful for teaching, for rebuking, correcting, training, 
and righteousness. And I love that because it's covering all the bases. It's not just, you know, it's not just to bring correction, yeah. but like you said, it's to remind us that we can live in a place of peace, that we yeah. can surrender and know that we're going to have victory even in our hard, dark moments or, um, you know, just that we can trust him. We can trust him if we're on the brink of what we think is divorce or, you know, circumstances that we've we've been told are, are going to be, you know, life ending, any of those that we can still trust yeah. who he is. So uh, remi awesome. remind me of, of somebody was asking me the other day talking about uh, wives submit yourself. The Bible says <laughs> to your husbands and, and, and they were really like, well, that's, you know, so chauvinist and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, well, that's not the way my wife sees it yeah. because the Bible tells me to love my wife Right. Exactly like Christ loves the church. And I had to think about that one day. I thought, how does Christ love us? Yeah. Well, he, he brings us peace. He brings us joy. He brings us hope. Protection. He keeps us from fear. Yeah. He, he does all those things. And if I'll do all those things for my wife, why would, and she looks at me and said, I don't know why I wouldn't want to follow you. Right. Yeah, you're taking <laughs> care of everything. Why, why, don't you want to, why wouldn't you want to follow somebody that's blessing you and yeah. meeting your needs and seeing to your, your future? And, and, and that's the same thing with the Word of God. God said he would do the same thing, that, that, that we're the bride of Christ, yeah. and he wants to bless us. He wants to love us. He doesn't want an ugly bride. He wants right. a beautiful bride. <laughs> <laughs> he, wants, he wants us to be prosperous yeah. and to do well. He's, he's looking for your future to do good to you. Yeah. And, and since that's the case, we need to find out how to make sure we stay in that place of, of preparation yeah. uh, for Jesus. And, of course, well, we've got so many scriptures. Going yeah, well, and I was just going to say, too, it just brings me back to the reminder, I think, even in my own life, that it's so important that we keep scripture in context and that we read before and behind. And I'm still growing in that area. So often I'll read something and I'll go back and I'll reread it in full context and I'll think, I probably didn't read that scripture or even teach that scripture maybe the first time in the right way. And so, you know, I, I just, um, if you're listening in today and you're like, gosh, I just feel like Christians have been preaching at me one way, you know, we apologize for anyone who's ever taken things out yeah. of context. Um, yeah. but, and we encourage you to really re read the scriptures in their fullness. Um, you know, try to learn about the history of when that chapter or when that uh um, even that part of the Bible was produced, you know. Right. It's just so important. It's important for us. And I think it's John 14. I uh, <laughs> wasn't planning on any of this, but uh, it, it talks about uh, that the Holy Spirit yeah. will guide us into all truth. I mean, I just, I guess that's why I just stay amazed with God. He knows that on our own, we're in trouble. Right. On our own, we're a mess. <laughs> we, we need help. And, and he sent the Holy Spirit that even when we study the Bible, if we study it without the help of the Holy Spirit, we're going to miss the point and why certain things were written and the way they were written. Yeah. And because the, the, the truth is that it's very clear. God said this book was written through the guidance of the Holy Spirit, that yeah. men didn't just write this, that the Holy Spirit guided them to write it. So if the Holy Spirit wrote the book, we probably need the Holy Spirit to interpret That's the so book good. back to us so that we don't miss what he's really trying to say. So we need to learn how to, to really pray and ask the Holy Spirit to, to give us eyes to see and, and a heart to understand and a mind that's clear that we can focus and and really see what the depth of these verses are. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's we're, uh, good. we're 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 and we're still learning. That's what I mean. I've been in this. Oh my gosh! I started reading 47 years ago, uh, and and it's amazing. It's not that big a book, but <laughs> for, 47 years later, I'm still trying to find the end of this thing because there is no end. It's just so much yeah. life in here that uh, we just keep reading and growing. Well, and, you know, I think back of even when I was a child, before I really knew Jesus and, um, and had really encountered Jesus, 
I would see, I was at my grandparents a lot, and my grandfather read the Bible, I don't even know how many times, so, so many times. And I remember every time I'd come in, he'd be at the table all spending time with the Lord. And I, I remember I would always think, hasn't he read that book? <laughs> how many times is he going to read that book? And, um, yeah. you know, and he would say, you need to read this yeah. book, yeah. you know, and that was the last thing I thought I wanted to do at that, um, at that age, you know. But now we say this all the time, the more that I read it, the less I feel like I know, and I'm just like, not, not overwhelming, like I'm never going to get this, but like a hunger, and the Bible says that those that hunger and thirst for righteousness, they're going to be filled, Amen. they're going to be filled, yeah. and yeah. it is, it's funny, every time, you know, that I get in the Word, I just feel like, oh, just more, I need more, I need more time, I need to understand that better, um, but it, I'm grateful for it, so grateful for it. And it speaks to where you are today yeah. and, and in this generation, too, because each generation is different, but the Word of God's the same, yes. but it speaks to the generation uh, that we're living in. And I know some people could kind of look, well, yeah, that was good for back then. That was No, if you let the Holy Spirit show you, boy, this thing's up to date. Uh, it's it's ready to speak Lord. to you and, and what's going on in our, our politics, what's yes. going on in the wars and nations and problems, and, and all covered already. God already has the answer to it and, and the way to fix it. Yeah. So you want to pray for us? Yes, we would just love to pray for you today. Just that um, we're just going to pray that God would just speak to you. And even at the sound of my voice um, today, I just ask, Lord, that you would reveal to them, Lord, your word says that you you give us knowledge and understanding. And above everything, that you would give us wisdom. That's what we ask for. And so, like Larry said, we pray, Father God, for anybody listening today, Lord, that you would just reveal who you are to them, Lord, that the words that are in this book, Mm. Lord, would become alive and active to them wherever they are, Father God. Lord, that you would increase their understanding of you and that you would reveal all truth by the power of your Holy Spirit. And where it's been hard, we just ask that you would bring, bring truth, that eyes would be open. In Jesus' name, bring clarity. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Yeah, so we just want to say thank you so much for listening in today. Find us on our social media. You can find us on YouTube, In The Word TV, and um, find us again on social media. Find us, like us, love us, share us. Have a blessed day. We just appreciate you watching today. Tell a friend about it. Let everybody know we're here, and we love you. God bless.